Wow, it is a really gray day here in Western Oregon. I mean, really gray. This little extra midweek video is not gonna have any adventures, not gonna have any DIY in the garage. This is just gonna be me talking, answering uh, a number of questions that I get very, very frequently on the channel and sometimes through Instagram, sometimes through my website. I generally don't have time to answer all of the questions and messages that come to me, so I wanted to cover some of these things that I get asked a lot and hopefully uh, it answers some questions for some of you. You can't, you can't just get online and order one of these. Each one of these is custom built to order. There are just far too many variables to be able to just go and order on a website. The truck you have, um, the height you want it built at, the types of windows you want or don't want, or side hatches, the types of doors you want in the back. There's options inside for headliners, lights, toolboxes, there's simply far too many variables. And so the only way they will build one of these for you is if you work with a local Lear dealer. Now you can find uh, a dealer near you on Lear's website. They have a dealer locator. That's how I figured out who I needed to work with uh, here in Eugene. The cost again will depend on all of those variables, the size of your truck, the height of the canopy, the window options you choose, the interior options you choose, whether you use just stock black, gray, or white aluminum, or if you have them color code match it to your vehicle. Other variables may be how far you are from where they build these, how far it has to get trucked. I don't know if that's a factor or not. And I suppose each individual dealer may have their own decision making on how much they mark up the, the canopies. The base model for this started at $2,000, and by the time I added the height, uh, the window options, the door options that I wanted, that ended up adding about another $1,000 to the cost. But your cost can vary greatly depending on many factors. That is undoubtedly the most common question I have been asked over the past six months. One is that I want to experience a winter without the insulation so that when I do insulate it I can actually feel the difference the insulation is making. Two, um, I don't have limitless time. I have to work. Uh, I spend a lot of time editing video every week. I've got other truck projects to work on and um, it's a constant juggling act and Insulating the canopy is for me going to be a relatively big project that's going to require some research to figure out exactly what I want to do and how I want to do it and um, it just everything takes time and I just I can't get every single thing done at once. What I find interesting is that I camped for a year and a half using a tent and nobody was worried about me insulating the tent. This is essentially a metal tent um, it's actually much warmer and cozier than my gazelle tent was because it's much less drafty. Um, even though the, the walls are metal, um, you know, I feel like the temperature inside my tent and the temperature inside this canopy on a given, say, 30 degree night are about the same. I survived up to this point without having any sort of insulated accommodations when I camp out in the cold. I rely on my sleeping bag and now my electric blankets to stay warm at night and it doesn't matter what the space around me is like. Anyway, insulation, yes, at some point. What am I gonna insulate it with? I don't know. There's spray options, there's the rigid foam options, there's, you know, Havelock wool some people have suggested. A priority for me is to not lose any space. It's already a small space. I don't want to encroach on the space that I have. I'm most likely to use half inch rigid foam inserted between the skeleton of the canopy. But I really don't I really don't know yet for sure. I just have not had time to research it. And it's not that high a priority for me. Um, I'm perfectly happy camping in it the way it is. While having it a little cozier would be nice, ultimately the only thing I do in there is sleep. I'm inside my bed the whole time and I'm perfectly warm and cozy inside my bed. You know, and a little blast of heat when I change clothes before bed or in the morning is enough to to make it a, a comfortable and enjoyable experience. I doubt that Canopy is going to get insulated this winter and it's probably something that I will think about more and look into over the course of the year and um, try and have it done for next winter. So yeah this is sort of in the same vein as the Canopy insulation and the answer is in some ways similar. 
Um, I just not have not had time to truly look into it and do the research that I need to do. I don't want to rush into just jumping on something without actually doing my own research. Now a diesel heater is definitely a possibility. A lot of people have them, like them. I feel like I've also seen a lot of people have various difficulties with them and um, you know I want to take my time do some research and make sure that uh, I'm gonna be happy with whatever system I get and maybe it'll be a diesel heater maybe it'll be something else the electric heater that I'm using now is really just a temporary stopgap I needed something so I could still get out in winter camp after my mister heater buddy stopped working so same thing there I don't think that I will have a heating system in place this winter uh, I've just got too many other projects that are higher priorities at this time and I you know and all of the truck projects always end up taking a back seat to getting videos out to you guys and that takes a lot of time every week and that's just the reality is that I you know I get out here into the garage as much as I can but I also got to be able to get out on trips and I got to be able to sit there behind the computer and get the videos put together so um, <laughs> I'm going as fast as I can on all the projects um, and w one day something will happen. This last trip where you know it got down to below zero degrees um, really underscored how much I would like to have a good heating system and a way to possibly be able to hole up in the canopy um, for a number of hours on a really bad day if I wanted to and stay comfortable in there um, without worrying about filling the space with condensation from the Mr. Heater Buddy or completely draining uh, my power station with an electric heater. So it's coming, but I don't know exactly when, and I don't know exactly what it will be. In my last video, you saw me talk about a number of things that can go wrong when you're out camping in extreme cold. But you don't have to be out in the snow and in the wilderness to have things go wrong in winter. You can be cozy at home and snowstorm, windstorm, freezing rain, all of these things can provoke power outages right in town and leave you without power. I rely on my Jackery power stations to keep my devices running when I'm out in the wilderness, but the Jackery 1500 also shines back home when winter weather brings electrical outages. A high output unit like this can power almost any appliance in the kitchen. It can help you keep doing the work you want to stay on top of. And of course, keep your phone charged up so you've got a line of communication to the outside world. And it can be recharged by the sun. Right now, through the 14th of January, 2022, Jackery is offering $150 off the Jackery 1000 solar generator package and $250 off the Jackery 1500 solar generator package. I'll put links to those in the description below. So speaking of the Jackery, a question that I get asked a lot is, will the Jackery X power device Y? I don't off the top of my head know the answer to every one of those questions. Um, it's always simply a question of the capacity of the specific Jackery unit and the power draw of the electrical item. My Jackery 500 will run items that are up to about 500 watts. My Jackery 1500 will run items that are up to about 1500 watts. On just about every single electrical device. If you look on it somewhere, you'll find a spot that says what the wattage is. And that's really all there is to it. Also, a quick Google search will tell you the typical wattage of whatever item you're wondering about. For example, I had someone ask me if the Jackery 500 will run a home fridge in the event of a power outage. And I don't know, it depends on the fridge. But I did a quick Google search. I saw that most home fridges run somewhere in the 300 to 800 range depending on how old the fridge is, uh, how big it is, a few other factors. So the answer in that case was, well, maybe if your fridge is one that's at 300 watts, and no, if the fridge uh, is one that runs at 700 watts. But it's very simple to figure out. I figure out the wattage of the item and compare it to the output capacity of whichever power station you're, you're considering. These are the BF Goodrich TAKO2 all-terrain tires. These are the same tires actually that I had on the Forester, although obviously these are bigger. 
These are 265-75R16. Now that is the stock size on the Pro 4X model of the Frontier. These tires were already on the truck when I bought it, which was just lucky. I really love these tires. I, I love them on the Forester and they have been great on the Frontier as well. They're tough, they're grippy, especially air down. Um, they handle terrain very, very well. They do great in fresh, cold snow. They are a triple peak snow rated tire on ice or like hard packed snow on the highway that's been driven over and frozen. Um, I, you know, you, got, you still have to be very, very careful in those situations. But in fresh snow where there's any amount of depth at all, um, and you air these down, the, the grip is fantastic. I have been nothing but happy with the performance of these tires. There are definitely other all-terrain tires out there that work very well also. This is just what is on my truck. I'm answering the question, this is what on, is on my truck. I'll probably need to buy new tires in the coming year. I'm not 100% sure what I will get yet, but I would not hesitate to spend the money on these tires again. The app I use on my iPad is Gaia GPS. It works really nicely because you can plan your trip at home on your desktop computer. You can set up routes, you can set up waypoints. Um, it's really handy because you can do research, you can look at other maps, look at Google Earth or whatever to help figure out what your trip is gonna be. You put all this stuff uh, on your maps in Gaia GPS on their website and then uh, your device populates with that information. Now, obviously out in the middle of nowhere, you very often don't have cell service, you don't have internet. The way Gaia GPS works is that you pre-download the map data uh, into your device while you're at home and while you have internet. Then when you're out there, Gaia GPS is able to show you where you are on those maps and you've got all of your information, your routes, your waypoints, whatever, it's all there available for you. It does take a certain amount of planning in advance, but that planning process alone actually helps ensure a more successful trip because you've thought about where you're going, you've looked at what looks interesting out there, and you've plotted a route and so it's not necessarily so random. If you're gonna run Gaia GPS on an iPad, you do need a cellular model iPad, one that's able to be on a cell service plan. Your iPad doesn't actually need to be on a cell plan. Um, the GPS receiver in the iPad works regardless of whether the iPad itself is connected to a cell plan or the internet. So the iPad receives the satellite signals and it's able to figure out where you are on the maps. Some people use just the standard Wi-Fi iPads and they pair them via Bluetooth with a separate GPS unit. And that's another option if those are things you already have. But if you're just getting set up, I would definitely recommend just getting a cellular iPad from the get-go. And then that's one less device to deal with, one less thing to keep track of, one less thing to keep charged. The system isn't perfect. Uh, Guy GPS definitely has its little flaws here and there. But overall, it's a really great tool and um, I rely on it. So it's funny, um, for a couple of years on the channel, I have been showing myself making cowboy coffee when out on camping trips. But on my recent video where I did a little unplanned camping uh, out in the snow, up in the Cascades, I had nothing with me, no stove, and I cooked on a campfire and I made my coffee in the morning on the campfire, and I made it the same way I always do, cowboy coffee in my little pot and suddenly everyone was all concerned about my coffee. People seem to be under the impression that cowboy coffee does not taste good. That couldn't be further from the truth. It actually makes a really good cup of coffee. In fact, I like it so much that most of the time at home, I take that little coffee pot out of the truck and actually make cowboy coffee inside, even though I've got French press, I've got a drip coffee maker, I've got a pour over cone, I've got a mocha pot. Don't worry, people. <laughs> I've been drinking coffee daily since I was a teenager and I really, really like a good cup of coffee and Cowboy Coffee makes a good cup of coffee. I think there's a misconception because it's boiling that it makes the coffee taste bad, but it's simply not the case. Now, if you were to take an already made cup of coffee from a drip coffee maker and put it in a pan and bring it to a boil on the stove, I agree, that tastes terrible. When you start with boiling water, pour in the grounds, bring the coffee back to a boil, it does not impart that, that 
bad flavor. And if you have never actually made cowboy coffee, I would encourage you to give it a shot because it truly tastes good. No, I'm not, not at all actually. There are bear and cougar in the woods around Oregon, but in the places that I go camp, those animals are not accustomed to people being around. They are very, very afraid of people. In my entire life in Oregon, I've seen one bear ever, and it was just doing everything it could to get away from me. I've seen cougar twice, and same thing, very, very shy animals. All they want to do is, is get away. The places where you hear about cougar attacks are generally close to populated areas where those animals are accustomed to seeing people. Two-legged predators are my primary concern. Um, I have stumbled into a number of sketchy situations over the years. That's why I will not camp, you know, within a 45 minute radius of town at, at an absolute minimum. Seems like all the sketchy stuff happens, you know, sort of right in the fringes of when you get into the BLM land or national forest just outside of town. Um, you get pushed further into the wilderness and pretty much the only people I encounter are, you know, people like you and me who just want to be out there, um, enjoy nature and be left alone. So I've never really had a, a bad encounter with people out either, um, in part by, you know, not camping close to town and when I am in the local hills, which I do go into sometimes, uh, when I stumble upon something, I just keep moving, keep looking forward. I don't look too close. Uh, I don't want to bother anybody. Animal that I'm most concerned about, uh, in Oregon at least, is rattlesnakes. But even there, uh, I've never actually seen one in all of my trips out around Oregon, uh, even in places that are supposed to have lots of rattlesnakes. So this isn't necessarily a question per se. I receive unsolicited messages and questions every single day and ultimately I just cannot take the time to answer them all. If I got into conversations with every person who sent me a message on Instagram, that's, that's all I would do. As it is, I already spend a couple of hours a day dealing with comments, uh, responding to people that I am having conversations with, and other messaging that is necessary to uh, keep the channel running. So if you send me a message on Instagram and I don't respond, I'm sorry, it's not that um, I'm being a stuck up jerk or whatever, I just, I just simply can't. It's just not possible to keep up with it all.